<laughs> We're freaking in it, dude. 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 What's up, dude? How you been, dude? Oh, dude, I've been freaking good, dude. It's been like freaking a minute since we hung, dude. Yeah, dude. Yeah, it's been a time, dude. It has been a what time. What you been up to, dude? I've been like, you know, I've been like... Smashing gash, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I was going to like build up to that, but like, you know, I've been doing that too. Really, dude? Yeah. I'm a virgin, How about dude. you, dude? Nah, never. You, you putting butt? <laughs> no, nah, never one time, dude. <laughs> never one time? You nah, never, dude. You never put a butt, dude? I'm single. I'm a virgin. I plan to stay that way till I die, which should be pretty soon. Oh, cool. Congratulations. Thanks, dude. That's yeah, some really exciting I'm on stuff, my dude. way out. That's really Yeah, exciting. my plan was to fucking vote November 6th, mm -hmm. and then see you later. Okay. Well, uh, <laughs> mission accomplished, then. Oh, yeah, dude. I just want to die on my board. You, <laughs> you told me. Dude. <laughs> can more people just die on their board like, yeah like, whatever kind of board you got dude <laughs> like whatever you got whether Surfboard, it be board skateboard waterboard just long die, board, dude. dude anything dude <laughs> if you want to die like this is the podcast for you dude long board long board i haven't seen a long board in a minute it's been a it's been a minute uh have you been to venice no <laughs> i think that that's where they still breed <laughs> sure right <laughs> yeah, yeah like venice beach just like people like cruising between all the tourists and stuff like that yeah i wonder yeah they're probably just laying around uh like i guess i just haven't been to venice beach but i like, the way i imagine venice beach is that there's just like a pile of longboards sitting on the beach right near Muscle Beach, and anyone can grab there's one, like the, bird scooters. There's like bird so. collectors. <laughs> like yeah. there's a dude, and instead of a, a pickup truck, it's like a VW van that picks yeah. up all the longboards and is like, oh, let me redistribute these uh, <laughs> yeah, <totally. laughs> before the morning comes, dude. Yeah, there's skateboard socialists out there in Venice <laughs> Beach. Dude, we got to keep the fight alive. You know what I mean? I agree, dude. Forget it's... the lights, skate, and destroy. Hell yeah, dude. That's why I voted. Uh, vote yes on board. Prop board. <laughs> on, on, on prop board. <laughs> uh, yeah, dude. It's five props. B-O-A-R-D. Vote uh -huh. yes on all of them. Not to be confused with prop board. B-O-R-E-D. That's like a, a social interaction prop. That totally. people get really confused about. Yeah, dude. It's like state funding to help you like. It's state versus federal, so that's where it gets, like, really tricky. <laughs> totally. Yeah, dude, not being bored is legal in California, but it is illegal in uh, in America. Or the reverse. I don't remember how I was trying to do that joke, so I'm just continuing to talk, and hopefully we'll you find who it out are eventually. listening or watching, then you just forget what the beginning was. Yeah, totally. Yeah, I mean, totally, yeah. Anyway, come see my stand-up. I'm super funny. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I've got really well-crafted jokes, and I think you'll really appreciate yeah, dude. what we're doing here. I write 15 hours a day. You write 15 hours a day, dude? <laughs> yeah, man. Dude. Granted, there's only one day in my work week. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great point, people who, who are like, dude, I work, you know... I work 10 hours a day, <laughs> all right? And you're like, wow, that's impressive. I work one day a week, though. It's, yeah. it's, it's a thing. I take big vacations take, weekly. You know, it's more important, you know, I'm all about that work hard, play hard, hard, harder mentality. <laughs> yeah, totally. As long as it's hard, I'm there. I think the douchiest hat that I ever got. Oh, uh, here we go. Yeah, yeah. You're always <laughs> you're always going off about your hats. <laughs> that's that's me. That's what people know about me. me I don't know if you know this. Uh, in Los Angeles, uh, Jeremiah's kind of a hat guy. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I liter I literally uh, I started wearing hats like a couple years ago, and I had people at comedy clubs not recognize me, like <laughs> what? Lo looking right through me, because I never. They a lot of people associate me with my long hair oh yeah totally. So I, whenever i do you know the tuck behind the ears and I put a hat on like i had people that wow they're like who like, is this tall boy yeah <laughs> this tall young looking lanky man with a with a hat on it's so funny how simple we are as beings just in general i do it everyone does it but like there are numerous comedians in la who just they wear glasses that look like this mm-hmm and everyone is like, you guys look just alike. I'm like, really? Me and Connor McNutt? 
He's 15. Yeah. He's 15. <laughs> Dude. He's one foot tall. I get the exact same thing. with. So I, I get people nonstop that, that tell me I either look like a, a friend of theirs or they're college roommate. Uh, I think a lot of people might have had this haircut in college, and uh, I just stuck with it, you know? Interesting. <laughs> but I get it all the time. But I'm like, okay, show me a picture. <laughs> I always am like, show me a picture. I want to see what and this looks like. And they're the ugliest person they're on earth. Disgusting. <laughs> I know. They're so, like, not not once has anybody ever shown me somebody that I'm like, this, oh, this is a good-looking man right here. Totally. Like, it's always somebody that's just like, like has, like, been living like under bong water dude i know it's like oh dave i found your doppelganger and it's just like a pile of shit wearing a <laughs> monocle <glasses>. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look, that isn't even full glasses yeah uh it's literally dude, just a I, piece dude, of glass I, I have two lenses come on <laughs> yeah. it's like a broken mirror with someone pissing on it <laughs> yeah. dude like dude dave that looks exactly this is my like dad. you dad he looks just <laughs> like you <laughs> Douchiest hat I ever had. Yes. It was a uh, uh, shout out to this company. I don't even know if they exist anymore, but they were. Uh, Billabong. They were, a, <laughs> they were a sponsor of my old podcast. There's this company called Rally Flip Cap. Okay. Okay. So it was a double brimmed hat. Okay. I've never even heard of that. Uh, there's a reason. Sure. So on the, on the front of the hat, it reads work hard. Uh -huh. And then there was a button flap on the other brim that you would pop it up and you could stick it up like a sign on your forehead that said play harder. <laughs> what? Yeah. <laughs> Whoa, man. I got so many questions. Yeah. I, well, I'm curious if that company is still alive and kicking. Cause this is about four, at least four years ago, four or five years ago, man. Flip cap, so that probably means that every hat they made looked like that. Yeah, right? they, well, the, it was no, like the whole they had thing a lot they of did. different options. Yeah, I wonder if people ever wore them and thought they were cool. Like when I was in high school, this uh, one of my buddies, he was a redneck, and but that was him. And I didn't. I came from kind of a rednecky place, but he was like a redneck, well, like to well, the point where he had like a lifted yellow truck with yellow rims and like um what city are you coming from i'm from greenwood lake new york okay. which is like in the boonies an hour north of new york city and uh he had like yosemite sam mud flaps you know what i mean dude it, and, any whatever reason you can always <laughs> tell the class of the person if they're an adult and they have a cartoon character totally. like somewhere embedded <laughs> on their totally. on their truck if you didn't outgrow that face <laughs> <laughs> totally uh, then you will be this way forever. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But the thing about it was like, you know, we gave him a lot of shit for it because we gave each other shit all the time. But it was like, he was being himself and that was just him. And then the PT Cruiser came out and it was like marketed as a cool thing and he bought into it and he like sold his truck and got a purple PT Cruiser. <laughs> and... <it> <laughs> And we were like, dude, no, what happened? <laughs> this man? is way worse than the yellow <laughs> yeah. truck with the yellow rim. At least that was you. What yeah. is this? You're and trying I, to be somebody who you're not, man. And I feel like the people that wore the flip cap, like the only people that wore the flip cap were the people that did that. You know what I mean? Like there wasn't a They're single person. They're trying to person. get ahead of the, the curve. Right. Like, I guess this is the next trend. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like they, I don't know what's cool, so I just believe stickers that i see right or whatever or jeremiah's podcast like do you think they sponsor your podcast do you think that you like ruined any dates <laughs> for men like oh hell yeah dude i man i was wondering <laughs> what i was gonna need to do to get in with this girl and then i listened to jeremiah's podcast and i found it man there's there's like a hat that, that's like it's like it says just hey on the front and then like it flips up will you marry me <laughs> yeah totally <laughs> <laughs> um he proposed with a flip cap i don't know how it was weird the bottom brim said i'm single and then he flipped it up and it said taken dtf then taken dtf <laughs> and then dt cuddle yeah dt cuddle oh man that's got to be a shirt someone sells on Cafe Press. Uh, 
<laughs> I haven't thought about cafe press in a long time. Oh, I think about it every day, my yeah, friend. Dude. Yeah, I'm always checking cafe I'm press. I'm always thinking see. about the next <laughs> avenue where I can make a thousand dollars. I'm just trying to see. You know, people are putting up new mug designs every day, and so I'm just checking on there to see what my next mug is going to be. Yeah, <laughs> you a big mug guy, huh? Yeah. You got a mug Love collection? Mugs. Yeah. I um, I don't. I don't have. I I'm. Do at, you have I, pins or anything like that that you're like a collector of? You have a like collector's items, anything? Not really. I mean, sort of. I have like from back when, like basically all I did in high school was go to punk shows, and back then I would sort of oh what amass. Were, what, what were your your bands that you followed? Um, it was like basically all pop punk. Um. Big and local. So my favorite band in high school was Big Wig. Do you know okay. that band? I don't think I do actually. They got pretty big and like punk and pop punk, uh, and they don't really. Every now and then they'll play a show now, but they don't really exist. Gotcha. They're just like a New Jersey punk. They're band. more wig than big now. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. They're just wig now, and you know. <laughs> I had to say it. I shook Thank my you. head immediately. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I rewind the video. I'm like, oh, why did I do that? Oh God! I, I, I just—it's a—it's a—it's a guttural thing. I just had to get it out. Don't worry, I'll bring it up every few minutes. Okay, cool. That's nice. <laughs> <laughs> hey, remember that wig reference you made? Yeah, that was a pretty lame joke, man. So, Honestly, anytime I say a joke that tanks, I'm just gonna bring up that to make myself feel better. Great. That's what we do in Jersey. Yeah. Just shit on each other to prop ourselves up, and I'm not kidding. <laughs> Have you ever been there? It's a very fun. I'm not. You know what? I've like, only been there like one time. Uh. Jeff Ross's family is from there, okay. and uh, I was hanging out with him uh, one weekend in New York, and, he, and he's like, "Do you want to come with me to see my family?" And oh I'm my like, God. "Yeah, I'm, I don't have, I'm not like, I'm just hanging in New York and doing shows, and I don't have a spot tonight." And we just went and had like a nice dinner in Jersey with his family. Sounds great. Yeah, it was awesome. Yeah, that's the thing, man. I'm not actually from Jersey. I'm from New York, but it was my town is right on the Jersey border, so I spent a lot of time in Jersey, and yeah. That whole area, like downstate New York, northern Jersey, um, western Connecticut, and the city, it all has a very similar vibe. It's all like very, very kind and very like the, it's there's so much love there, but it's tonally so aggressive mm. and it's so rooted in shit talking just in general, like just just like day-to-day -day interactions at the grocery store the person at the grocery store will just talk shit to you about what you're buying and if you're not from there and you're not used to it it really feels awful it's like <laughs> it's truly like like wow well, you're getting a lot of deodorant today jesus christ what are you doing with your life you know yeah I mean? yeah yeah. how bad do you smell let, let, let me give it a smell and wow disgusting you're gross uh or that's a did bad you, example. Did you but. try to bring that mentality out to California and it backfired it on at you ever? Yes. Right when I moved here, I went to school at USC and I very much remember I like the day the orientation at SC, I was waiting in line outside of like, I don't know, some building and there was a parking structure nearby. <laughs> and someone's car alarm went off and I'm in a line of like a hundred or two hundred kids and I just turn and yell. Hey, shut the fuck up at a car alarm, which like any one of my friends would have done and we all would have laughed. Yeah. I just thought it was so crazy and funny and everyone was like, what is happening? Oh, wow. <laughs> Granted, hey, shut the fuck up is not much of a joke, uh, like inherently not really that funny anyway. So I was already uh, playing with fire. But yeah, I turned it at the top of my lungs, yelled, what the fuck? fuck shut up or whatever now you, you being from upstate new york you didn't really have like an accent or anything coming out here did you, you still talk the same way or did do you feel like it shifted a little bit well, after you moved well i moved a lot my i was in my dad was in the navy my whole life so i i was a navy kid i i really only lived in new york for five years but it was like the formative years so yeah. i the pivotal yeah i feel like yeah, i'm yeah, from yeah. there before there, I lived in Tennessee, before that Chicago, before that Italy, before that San Diego, and before that Hawaii. Italy, wow. Yeah. How long were you there? 
three years from when I was three years old to six years old. So a lot of girlfriends, right? A lot of girlfriends. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Really, the dating game was pretty uh, intense yeah. in Italy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Lost my virginity at four years old. The playtime got a, a gypsy. little crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I was stolen, actually. <laughs> it was a. Uh, I'm very- glad we brought this up because it's traumatizing. Uh, you know what? Uh, the uh, the gypsy that uh, that took Dave's virginity is actually calling into the show right now. Oh my god! Yeah, um, I haven't seen her in months. <laughs> uh, hello. Uh, it says Madam something is calling in. Uh, hello. Uh, is uh, this my precious Dave that is uh, that is uh, on this program? Hi, Madeline. Yes, Madeline is here to call you again. <sighs> yeah. Um, I'm coming for seconds, Dave. Yeah, I know. Well, again, Do you remember no. the first time? Um, no. You don't but... remember? No, I was just told about it by you um, every time you've called since. I don't know why I keep giving you my new number, quite frankly. Um, no, I was four. I don't remember anything from when I was four. Also, I blocked it out because, um, well, I just liked it too much. Also, I should say that this riff is a little horrifying. <laughs> <laughs> you will forever, forever, forever replay this in your mind, and you will remember every second of it, Dave. <laughs> I just realized that what we were joking around about was um, uh, like sex trafficking and pedophilia and assault. You know what I mean? Like, you know when you... (laughs) I I will leave. I will leave now. (laughs) It is all good. I will leave. Okay, Dave. Goodbye. Goodbye. I miss you. I'm sorry that I I tanked that bit, but no, as no, I no. was starting to make jokes about it, I was like, I don't feel comfortable saying <laughs> any of these things. <laughs> leave it up, leave it up to Jeremiah, the ultimate, the ultimate yes ander, to be like, and the gypsies calling in to touch you when you were from a kid. <laughs> that one was on me. No, totally. Well, Dave I and I are care. Dave and I are both sweating right now. If you're watching on video, that that riff caused us to. Uh, Is that to what made sweat. me sweat? I guess no, it did. It, it definitely. Yeah. Because we started looking at each other like, are we going to keep we going? We went down a wrong path here. <laughs> <laughs> as soon as I said a gypsy's calling, in, I was like, "Is that one of the words that we're not allowed to say anymore? I don't remember." No, that is a real thing. Yeah, that's a real thing. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, but there's but still calling people. someone a gypsy. Yeah, yeah, dang gypsy. <laughs> yeah, like a gypsy is a thing you are that's bad, I yeah. think. But like ethnically, if you refer to someone because of their ethnicity as a gypsy, that I think is gotcha. insulting. There's I'm not so sure. many fine lines, man. Yeah. Well, I certainly don't want to. I mean, it's funny, too, because I joke around about like evil fucking shit in my stand up. Uh, and I'm definitely a proponent of joking your way through anything for mm-hmm. real. Yeah. But podcast, I don't know, man. It's all, it's hard. It's, especially in podcasting, it's hard. <laughs> There's something about, even on my own podcast, man, my podcast is a suicide podcast. We tell yeah. some of the darkest jokes. And there's just something about that relationship where I'm, I have to very often be like, you know what? <laughs> you know what? I'm putting my foot down here with this gypsy calling in. Um, yeah. So uh, uh, now that uh, I brought an awkward halt to the podcast, you know, this is actually a this is actually a first uh, on the show where uh, I've made a call so awkward <laughs> where we have to be mm-hmm. like, let's uh, rewind a second here. Oh, man. No, I think it's good. So let's get back to New York, all right? Sure. Now, you are living, and you lived there for like five years. What Did you do any comedy whenever you were out there? Hold on. I think the priest who fucked your brother is calling. Okay. Uh, <laughs> hello? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I guess the call dropped. I would have taken it. <laughs> oh, oh, man. 
Man, oh wow, the the Zodiac Killer is <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> oh, weird. I think we got Harvey Weinstein on the line. Let's just okay. Um, <laughs> no. It's me, Harvey Weinstein. <laughs> hey, Harvey. <laughs> I've been hiding right now. Yeah, good, you fuck. I didn't know you were the Zodiac Killer, too. Yes, me and the Zodiac Killer are one and the same. And also Batman? Also Venom. Oh, Venom, okay. Yes. Wow. Well, god damn it, you just keep making movies, you fucking garbage. That's right. Yes, nobody knows that I produced the movie Venom. And, and also multiple yeah. murders through the Zodiac Killer. Well, I hope you kill yourself soon, you... Trash can. <laughs> Good one. You, you full really of trash. You, know, you, you don't think I've heard that one before? Come at me, Dave Ross. Come on, give me your worst. You're representing white straight males everywhere right now. This is your chance to stand up. Well, I don't like you, you bad guy. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I thought. Yeah, you're right. Well, I definitely can't burn you as much. As the entire world has in the past. Yeah, man, I'm not doing very well here. Oh, uh, no, you brought up the world. <laughs> I have to go. I can't believe Harvey Weinstein just called. Okay, I have to, I have to mm-hmm. make uh, a disclaimer. Harvey Weinstein, uh, I hope he's not a fan of this show. I hope he doesn't listen to this show. I'm not really sure how he got the number, and he really came at you just now, Dave. It yeah, was... no. I, he, what sucks is he got me. <laughs> Another victim. <laughs> Another victim. Oh, man. Dude, I really. <laughs> Ooh. You feel that? Yeah. It's a reset. It's a reset button. It's a good. It's good. It's a good feeling. It's a reset. Reset into zero. You know how uh, originally I think how I met you, Dave, was through. The open mic scene out here in Los Angeles. Totally, man. And uh, we used to go to this place uh, that I mentioned on this podcast here and there with uh, some other guests, but uh, this place called uh, Westwood Brewing Company. Oh, man. Yeah. That was a a lot of us cut our teeth at. That was a spot. There was a Tuesday mic first. Um, Which, did you go to that? I I went to it some. I mean, it was horrifying. It was like they were so mean. So intimidating. Yeah. And I actually. You know what's funny is I think a lot about how like that sucked a lot and it made me not go there. But also, one of the first uh, big things that happened to me in comedy, like from my perspective, was them thinking I'm funny. Uh, like when they first validated me, huge, uh, huge, huge deal. It does make me think that we maybe need a little bit more of that uh, in comedy. A little bit, not that level of um, harshness, but a little bit more like. Um, I don't know, making it difficult on young comics because it gives you like a point of achievement. It makes you proud. It lets you know that and you're doing something right. It makes the stakes higher when you touch the stage. Yeah. So that way, like w- what we would do, we do the like uh, like the Wednesday and Friday night shows there, yeah. mainly the Friday nights. That was like the big night. Yeah, dude. Yeah, that's the thing. The, the Tuesday mic was like the first thing I knew about. And then that Friday mic... That Gil Garibaldo ran. Yeah. That, Mike, I think... I wish I could take people who are fans of comedy to that, Mike, five to eight years ago. Yeah. Because, like, I even knew it then. I remember... We probably even talked about it. Because you and I weren't really a part of the same mic circuit. You were, like, more on the club side. I right. was more, like, weirdo I get alt rooms. But it's not alt. Just non-club rooms. And, uh... But that mic was Friday night, 11 p.m. He wouldn't let anyone advertise it anywhere, so you had to hear about it. And he wouldn't make, there was no sign-up. He just picked. So you had to be so dedicated to comedy that you gave up your entire Friday from 11 p.m. to 2 a.m. Yep. to do a set. And so everyone there was the were the comics in L.A. at that level who... Uh, really fucking wanted it and uh and it's funny because like now five or eight years later uh all the people that did that mic are the people that are doing well yeah 
It yeah. was like you, me, O'Flanagan, Jack Robichaud, mm-hmm. Jake Weissman. Yep. Uh, Ahmed would give me priceless tags oh, at Bruco. Dude. He would give me priceless tags yeah. on that Barucha. That room was also where I learned to, I do a lot of like touring now. Dude, uh, to deal with rowdy crowds and yeah, stuff. Yeah, that's where I, I remember one time I did, uh, I, I like, the yeah, because the way that it would work is that um, there, it was like the fourth room in this huge UCLA bar and uh, Friday night. Mm-hmm. So during what college being in session, there would be a fuckload of people in the bar. So you never knew what you were going to get it in, as far as crowd goes. It went all night. Sometimes it would just be empty when you got on stage. Sometimes there would have been 50 college kids who walked in together and they're wasted and they're screaming at you. Sometimes we had to bark for stage time to yeah. get people in the room like, yeah. hey, this guy's on. Come, like, on. Uh, come on in. He's real funny. Yeah. 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 Or- I One time I started my set with two people in the crowd. And then halfway into my set, the door opens and 30 people came in, and the first person in this huge group of people opened the door literally doing this. <laughs> <laughs> all of us were like, what the fuck is happening right now? And she like walks all the way to the front and sits down. And um, every time I told a joke, like right, right about at the punchline, again, she would go, and to the point where I lost my fucking mind and I got like a foot from her face and just started. Ah, 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 I need so much fucking attention. Fuck you. And then as I was leaving, I'll never forget as I was leaving, I was just so pissed and I'm walking through the crowd and her friend who is sitting right behind her holds his hand up and goes, hell yeah, dude. Got her. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I was like, thanks, man. People <laughs> loved a good heckle takedown at Bruco. You were like, totally. you were like revered if you made yeah. that that happen because there were so. That's where that a lot of had. us. Well, yeah, I mean, that was you know that was one of the the hot spots that we had for the entire week. So yeah. so much was riding on it. Yeah, I remember having um, uh, like at my at the time this was years ago at Bruco whenever I had just started dating. Uh, who's now my wife. Uh, luckily, she didn't leave me because of things like this. But uh, we, uh, she was like having a housewarming for her apartment. And she was having like all her friends over and stuff like that. And I'm like, I got to go. I was like the first one to go. I was like, I got to go. And uh, and she's like, uh, where are you going? I'm like, I got to go to Bruco. Oh, wow. And uh, I remember her friends being so mad at me. That like her boyfriend would leave the party before everyone else. I'm like, I got a spot. This is dude. This is what I do. Totally, man. I yeah. I mean, I that entire time I didn't keep a girlfriend for very long, and I it's like, really hard. It was really really hard, and I would. I mean, I would tell them like this is. It was tough because I was so straight up about it. I would just be like, I have probably one night a week. To hang. Yeah. And if I get booked that night, I'm going to reschedule. And for anyone else, that's so shitty. That's so shitty. But the deal is that you, it's impossible to get good at stand up, especially in this goddamn town where there's literally 10,000 comedians. Uh, so I, I like, when I started, I was like, I'm not taking a day off. I'm not taking a day off until I feel like I have a grasp of this. Uh, and I didn't, dude. I, uh, My parents live in Pueblo, Colorado, and um, I, but I'm not from there. They moved there after college, and uh, one Christmas, I was visiting them, and I really wanted to do sets. I had never done sets there. I hit up some comics in LA I knew were from Denver, and Rob Gleason, who is another one of those guys at those mics, uh, told me about this mic uh, on whatever day was Christmas Eve that year, and they were yeah. still doing it. And I yeah. was like, nice. And Pueblo <laughs> is two hours south of Denver, and there was a snowstorm. So I drive my mom's station wagon two hours north to this mic. I have told the host that I'm coming. I show up, and he is, cares that I'm there. He's like, oh, cool, man. It's so cool that you came. Uh, yeah, you're going to be up in a few. And there's no one in the bar except for five comedians. And they are sitting at the bar, looking forward away from the stage. The host goes up and says, hey, 
Uh, this next comic is from L.A. He drove up here from Pueblo. It's so cool <laughs> that he's here. Uh, yeah, give it up for Dave Ross. I go up. No one turns around or even looks over their shoulder <laughs> for a second. I eat shit <laughs> on Christmas Eve. Walk up to the host, thank him, walk out into snow, and just burst out laughing. <laughs> and I call Jake Weissman, who's like my best friend in comedy, to tell him that I think I'm a real comedian. <laughs> Because it did, I think. I think it was that that not hurting my feelings yeah. that made me be like, "Oh yeah, I think I'm definitely in this." How now. long had you been doing comedy? Like a year, dude. Honestly, that's pretty cool that you were able to laugh about it that early in the comedy. Yeah. Because some people, it is the reverse effect for them where they end up quitting because of something like that. I know, but you laugh at it and you're like. No, this is so ridiculous. This, this is the only thing to do. Yeah, it is the only thing to do. Like this totally. is such like you're you're analyzing the situation. How far you drove? It's Christmas Eve. They give you a nice announcement and everything, and then still nothing from the bar. Yeah, dude. Who are the other comedians who are waiting to go? That's how comics are. <laughs> They're waiting to go up themselves. They're like, yeah, I'm not gonna give this guy. <laughs> <laughs> fuck this guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. L.A. Screw that guy. I will say too, like. Um, I, I'll always remember the the comics that went, especially when I was young, who were like really overly kind. Because the thing is, those guys, I don't expect them to watch me. Depending on the day, I could have been like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because like, I don't think it's even that they don't care about supporting comedians because they're in their head or whatever. It's just like on a day to day basis, if you're doing mics every day, you don't know who this fucking guy is. It's right. your social life. So you, if you're going up, if you're going to these mics every day, you're just going to hang out with your friends some days and you're not even thinking about it. But the people that go out of their way, like, man, I, I actually did quit first. I tried stand up a few times in 2006, got scared, didn't do it that much after that. But one of those times for three years, I was just like, oh, I can't. And then I, in 2009, I started and I had a better attitude. But during that time, I came down to L.A. I lived in Fresno. I came down to L.A. and did a mic at Synergy Cafe that was hosted by a man named Sean Patton uh, who lived in L.A. for one year and fucking hated it. Yeah. Uh, and he, uh, when he brought me up, I had told him that I had come down from Fresno. He gave me a spot like right in the middle where like there was still a shitload of comics there. He went outside and made them all come in and watch me because I had driven there from Fresno. And uh, and I had a good set. And when I came out, I like met all the L.A. comics and shit. Wow. I'll never forget that, man. That's Yeah, yeah Sean that's Patton's a, the real deal. That gives you a little bit of a, a running start whenever you... That's yeah. amazing. Yeah, totally. Yeah. And then I quit for three years. Heck so, yeah, dude. So fuck him. What were you doing during during that the dark period? I uh, Well, I always wanted to do it again, but I was just like... I don't know, man. I was You're just focused too afraid. on work and stuff like that. Yeah, I was no, I was definitely just afraid. I wouldn't admit it at the time, but I was just afraid. It scared me. I have really bad stage fright, really bad, and it's like really sanded down now. Yeah, but it's like it's a does it does it come back up occasionally for certain shows? Sure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, show shows where I randomly feel pressure. You know what? Like it certain really showcases happens? and stuff like that, or what? It's so hard. It depends because I can or like, if like a family member's in the crowd, that or, kind of thing. Do I mean I don't I don't that that one's hard sometimes. Mm -hmm. Whenever certain people that you like, I've I I don't get necessarily uncomfortable. I've gotten to a place now where I'm just like I'm I'm gonna do the material that I plan on doing, and if they don't like it, they don't like it. But like I did, I did a bit. Like a uh, like a couple years ago, where I, I was like making a statement, like my wife's mom was coming to see the show, and mm. I have a bit about having sex in the shower with my wife, and mm. I was like, I'm just gonna do the bit, like, and she didn't even say anything after. She's like, funny, funny, you know what I mean? This is funny. They never do, dude. Yeah, I have, I have a joke about how I had a dream where I had sex with my dad. I have a joke about killing my dad. I have a joke about having sex with my mother, uh, and like. <laughs> you know, because I, I don't know, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> this is what I'm talking about, how it's weird where I draw lines. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> But, you know, now, yeah, has your whatever. dad heard that material? No, but all of his siblings have. And I just, because my dad has only seen me do stand-up one time. 
And I was like, okay, the first time he sees me, I'm just going to do some, like, easy... Kinda, <laughs> some softballs. <laughs> yeah, <totally. laughs> Throw it right down the middle. We're not going to get the, too crazy. Having sex with him and my mother for yeah. uh, the next uh, time he sees me. Um, but, yeah, man, I've done jokes about... I've, I've done those jokes about that dream in front of like all his brothers and sisters and like their kids and shit. And they're always like so funny, Dave. So that funny. was hilarious. Yeah. But I was nervous every time. I wonder how your dad would react if he saw that. Oh, no. wow. Um, Dave, uh, Papa Ross is actually no. calling in right now. Yeah. No way. Yeah. That's crazy. Mr. Uh, Mr. Ross, uh, Hello, um, are you calling in to talk to Dave about? It somehow leaked online, I guess. Uh, as you saw the his his stand up bit. Yeah. Hello. Um. Is my son there? Dave. Yeah, Dave. Oh shit, man. Hey, Dad. Sorry, dude. Sorry, I accepted the call. Yeah, what the fuck, I don't know. dude? Sorry, just take it. Uh, hi, Mr. Ross. David, am I? I'm okay. You. What's the joke? Uh, wow. He's just straight up asking you what it is. Okay. Yeah. Um, I don't know, Dad. I mean, I. How would you not, How would you describe that, Dave? It's not like. Um, it's not, <laughs> okay. It's not about look. When I was fourteen, I had a dream, in which I had sex with you in the missionary position. Sounds great. Um. <laughs> uh, Mr. Ross, so you're 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 totally okay with uh, with what's going on uh, with, with that dream? You don't think it's, it has any weird meanings behind it or anything like that? Oh no! I mean, yeah, sure. Look, I'd fuck David in a heartbeat. Um, really? Oh yeah. Um, I'll have sex with anyone. Anything at any time. I'm a dad. Um, wow, Dave, your uh, your dad is a little bit hornier than I thought that he was gonna be. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I'm uh, wondering Ms. about this dream now. You you got. I you, just kind of thought it was a thing where I was trying to impress you, Dad. Oh no, <laughs> no, you want me. Um. David, I, honestly, I'm very happy to hear this because the first time I saw you do stand up, it was all about like food and stuff, and I was like, "Who is? What? I guess my son is a coward." But I want to hear you talk about real shit, like yeah, like yourself, like, like yourself incest, and person or like incest fun stuff, fun, fun like stuff, inc incest and killing people, you know, the Ross way. Dad, I gotta, I gotta go. This is on video. All right, uh, Mr. Ross, we got to let you go, but thanks for, for calling in. Yeah, whatever. It's my fault, Jeremiah. He, he was a little bit more, <laughs> <laughs> he was a little bit more <laughs> passive than I thought he would <laughs> He was, uh, he was definitely, uh, down to talk about the incest and stuff like that. Diff mm -hmm. Completely different reaction, you know. You really didn't think that that's what do, it would be like? I mean, honestly, it. Your dad really threw me a curveball. Well, everybody rebels against their parents, you know? Yeah, so... And so I... Yeah, my dad is like an incestuous, violent, mm -hmm. um, nice guy. And uh, <laughs> so, so I decided to go the other way. Um, and just you know, be, try to be normal, but, you know, beneath that, hate everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. Let's get into this next segment. I, isn't that so... Dude, I like... I am a really... I don't, I want to, yeah, move on. But, like, this is reminding me, like, when I'm riffing, especially when I'm doing character type stuff, I just go into, like, the grossest shit ever. <laughs> and, like I said, I have jokes about sex with my parents and stuff, and obviously I don't, like, want to do that. Right. Um, and it, But it's just, like, where my brain goes. And, uh... And people will come up to me after stand-up shows and be like, man, you are dark. And I don't even think about it that yeah. way. Yeah, yeah, It's just what you I think, think about. Do you think inherently you have a... Sometimes people tend to be 
uh, on stage what they're not sometimes in everyday sure. life? Do you find yourself, n- are you a dark person inherently in everyday life? Or would you say that it's almost an outlet? Because sometimes for me, people love seeing me angry on stage because oh, I'm, not, I'm not an angry person by nature. You know what I mean? I'm usually, I try to be, you know, very kind to people, but mm-hmm. like on stage, I have a very short fuse whenever it comes to audience members and stuff sure. like that. So people enjoy it because it's such a contrast to how I am in everyday life. You know what I mean? Interesting. So it might be, in my opinion, I think that you might be not a dark person in in everyday yeah. life so much. So in comedy, well, you get to use that as an outlet. Like it's your podcast, you, you know, it's very dark and stuff like that. Suicide yeah. Buddies, right? Yeah, it's funny. I don't even think I'm dark, though. Like I just, at least I don't see myself that way in general, even on stage. I, uh, but maybe I'm like more, it's probably, yeah, like, yeah, I'm a very like outwardly um, sort of uh, kind, make sure everyone's okay kind yeah. of person just in general. Mm-hmm. Um, and maybe I'm more like focused on my id on stage i'm just sort of like going for the like the the just the most animal i think that's actually what it is when i'm performing i'm like the most animal version of myself sure i'm louder i'm angry or yeah yeah and i'm talking about this because you know the jokes about having sex with my parents or killing them or whatever are actually just about human psychology it's just yeah. about like like i don't want to kill my dad i just like we all want to kill our dad and love our dad. You know what I mean? Right. Um, it's just a really fucked up way of saying that. Yeah. And so it's like, I think that's what I'm doing is I'll just like choose the most fucked up way of saying because I can. And well, why of course. wouldn't I? We get to be yeah. the most extreme versions of yeah. ourselves on stage. And that's what's super fun sometimes. Yeah, it's the best. Is getting to say outrageous <laughs> things that people in everyday life definitely would not say. Yeah. You know what I mean? You're not going to hear a dude like in normal conversation being like, I had a dream where I had sex with my dad. You know what I mean? You'd be like, I don't want to talk to this guy. Why are we talking right now? We're just, you know, we're trying to get through security at the airport right now. You know what I mean? Yeah, man. Uh, I really gave it to him. Yeah. I really gave it to him. <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah. I will say maybe, yeah, it's still too extreme of a way of saying it for some people. Like, literally, the joke about killing my dad is I, I say, like, uh, I love my dad so much. Also, I want to fight him in the rain. That's the first. And I think that really is a state of being for a lot of especially men. And uh, I said that. Yeah. And uh, I said that on stage in We've San Antonio. We've all wanted to fight our dads in the rain at some point. Absolutely. Yeah. While loving him dearly. Yeah. That's like the whole deal with your dad. Uh, I hope to have kids one day, and I hope they feel that way, because that will mean they're Americans. Right. Uh, <laughs> and I want to have American kids, if anything. I am a real And they have to be gay. Uh, (laughs) I'm going to make my kids have to be gay. Um, And I'm going to tell my wife that. You're right. (laughs) It isn't a choice. You are gay. (laughs) Like pinning it on the reverse. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I choose. It isn't a choice. Yeah, you kids are gay. Yeah, that's right. (laughs) Um, Yeah, anyway. Let's get into this next segment. Yeah, let's do it. Fanning out. Fanning out questions from fans. Nice, dude. Nice, dude. So uh, I asked people on Instagram and Twitter if they could ask Dave Ross any questions. What would it be? Cool. And we got uh, a few ones that I really like. one here. question. No, we got <laughs> three really solid ones. Okay. Narrowed them down. Uh, at It's Missy Martinez. Oh, I know her. You know her? Do you know her? Yeah. Yeah, she's the best, man. Yeah, she's great. She's, uh, she's what's the correct term? Porn... Star, adult film star, adult film, adult film actress. Actor. Yeah, 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 yeah. She's also fucking hilarious. Yeah, yeah. super funny, um, and super nice too. Yeah, I love her. Uh, she said because she's probably uh, listens to Suicide Buddies, your podcast. Yeah, ask him what his dream way to die is. Oh, what? Holy shit! That's such a good question. That, isn't that a great question? Yeah, yeah. Honestly, I want to live forever. I really do, if I think about it. Like, I have a lot of friends who say, like, I don't want to make it to 40. And I think that's bullshit, man. I want to die, w- like, shitting, pissing, and breathing into a bag. You know? I want to be 110. I want it to make no sense. I want to be a burden on my family. I want to <laughs> not be cognizant of what's going on at all. I do not want to die soon. It's so, like, that's how I want to go. I want to be just, like, a, a pus-filled pile of skin that everyone... Wanted to pull the plug on, 
but I, in my will, it said they didn't get any money if they did. <laughs> and then after I die, I want them to hang me. I want, <laughs> I want a public hanging <laughs> of an already deceased body. Yeah, it's like he yeah. died <laughs> weeks before this hanging. Totally. <laughs> There's n- literally, he's decomposing. There's no reason for the hanging. I want them to snap my neck publicly and for everyone to cry and throw vegetables at me. You know what? Like it in was, Braveheart. It was in his will. We have to honor it. Yeah. We're not getting a dime. And in this fantasy, I'm also rich as fuck. Yeah. I mean, it sounds like you're like a Scrooge McDuck type. Absolutely. But then becomes a burden on his family because they keep wanting you to die because they want the inheritance. But you're like, no, No, absolutely not. A few more years. I haven't had bones in three years. (laughs) (laughs) But you're not getting my money. No. Meredith. (laughs) Yeah. Um, That's That's good. I'm trying to think. I'm one of the I'm one of the people who I would not mind going early. Really? Yeah. Do you really believe that? What's early? I don't know. It changes uh the older that I get. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, I know. Cuz I I would have uh ide- like some of my idols died really really young and I'm like, "Oh, frick, I like you know, if I if I died at like like Farley like like yeah. we we're talking before I keep grazing your knee I, I got apologize. a big knee it's all right <laughs> just bare kneecaps I keep like brushing it oh um, yeah by the way I like uh, didn't know this was a video podcast and I'm gonna go work out after this <laughs> I don't normally wear <laughs> yeah. soccer shorts <laughs> and a sweatshirt you should see what he's wearing below that yeah. just fishnets snow pants <laughs> hello. <laughs> Uh, Fishnet snow pants, but like uh, Chris Farley and John Belushi, they died around the time I think that when they were like thirty three. And growing up, I was like, "Yeah, that sounds good." B- you know, they're those guys are right. like idols of mine. But like, oh no, I'm, I I'm thought like, that too. I'm like almost like I'm about thirty now, and I have so much more I want to accomplish. Totally, you know what I mean. So yeah. it's like I still I think that I have a fear more so of. Going into like a like becoming a vegetable or something like that, where yeah. I don't have control of when I go, kind of thing, yeah. and then I'm just like a shell of a memory of of what um you know that's like a fear. Totally, man. No, me too. I because I had a I had a a, a great aunt that we used to go visit in a home oh, whenever I was a kid, and I think that probably I was like it was so scary because sometimes she would. Like kind of talked to us, and then other times she was like on another planet. Yeah, and it was like whoa, dude. Yeah, my grandma, who was my uh, definitely my favorite person that I've ever met in my entire life, like able to love unconditionally so many people. It was crazy. She's just a, a like such a special person to me, and she later in life became not entirely a vegetable, but like very like much not herself, and yeah. like couldn't talk a lot of the time and didn't know who I was. And, uh, yes, I am definitely very scared of doing that. Actually, I found out that that happened to her. I hadn't seen her in years. And on my first big tour, I went through Pittsburgh to make sure to visit her. And I had no warning. No one in my family, my aunt who took me there gave me a little bit of a warning, but like my parents, no one told me how bad she had gotten. So I showed up and it was a punch in the face. I was like, dude, it was so awful. And then that night, (laughs) I did a bar show in Pittsburgh, just like my favorite person on earth has become not herself entirely. And I'm that's all I'm thinking about. And they're like rowdy and shitty fucking Penguins fans or whatever, just like drunk and not watching me, all wearing like suits with their tie loosened, just like, "Eh, fuck this guy. And I literally, at some point in my set, and I'm proud of myself for this, very proud. I looked at this crowd. They're like literally saying I suck and stuff. I just looked right at him and I said, hey, I don't give a fuck about any of you. (laughs) I left and I uh, I'm so proud I did that. Um, And I'm sure in my mind I'm exaggerating because I know some people that were there and they were like, it wasn't bad. But in my mind, my grandma was done. They were being shitheads and I just like flipped them off and left. Um so sometimes you got to make that make that call. Yeah, dude. I don't know. I think sometimes it's, it's more counterproductive, in my opinion, sometimes 
to do, and and not all comics agree with me on this, but for me, what I found personally, if a mic or a comedy situation is a really really rough, sometimes I find it more counterproductive to go up than to not go up at all. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. Because some people are like, no, you got to do it no matter what. Like you got to hit this many amount of spots. And I'm like. No, nah. I don't like know, my man. psyche is a little bit different as far as that perspective. If it's not quality enough, then it's not worth it to me. Yeah. Also, our no matter no matter how you feel about yourself as a comedian, no matter how much of an artist you are, and I, I you know, like I like to think of myself as more artist than commercial. I definitely want to be someone that like focuses on the creating part of it. Mm-hmm. But even then, it. It's your job, and your job is to entertain people. Yeah. And, like... Especially whenever you cross that barrier where people are paying money paying for money. hard tickets and stuff totally. like that. Like, rather than a lot of, like... There's a lot of shows around L.A. It's like, it's free shows. It's like, all right, you know, we can be experimental and do a lot of stuff like that. But, like, after a certain point, if you go out on the road and people are play- paying, like, money where they have to get, like, babysitters and all this stuff, and, like, they're going out to, like, an environment for a night out, and you're just, like, kind of, like whatever about it that's where i have an issue where i'm like dude like bring it a dude, little bit you more. have to you know what i mean like it, you owe it to them so especially the higher the ticket price man like you some crowds especially comedy clubs on the road you they got babysitters and shit yeah um they like paid for parking it's a lot they it, spend like, a lot of money it, it's sometimes it's their night out that month ma- yeah for the month yeah 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 so so even if they like hate you I don't know. You should think about them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Not just think about yourself. Yeah. Uh, at Jason Lee Farrar on Instagram, if you could time travel only once, would you? When, where, and why? Um, time travel right only top, once. I wouldn't because I am so busy trying to make this work. I think about it sometimes like, I could start working on this other thing, but like comedy, we've been talking about it, how fucking hard it is. And I've put 10 years in, I'm not going to like veer off the path, but for the sake of just, you know, having fun, uh, where would I time travel? Honestly, dude, we're talking about, um, meeting heroes who died young. I would love to, if I could time travel and just like hang out with Phil Hartman, if I could just hang out with Phil Hartman one time, man, He's the funniest person who ever lived. Chris Farley's up there, too. And that whole class of people of SNL around those years were just, like, unbelievable. Dude. But Phil Hartman, man, dude. You, you, you know his nickname, right? No. Glue. No, I didn't know that. that. His nickname was Glue. Everybody on the SNL cast called him Glue because he literally would play any role. He would play literally, if you wanted him to play a one-line or two-line role in your sketch and deliver... He'd be that guy. He'd be the straight man. He would be the main character piece. He literally do everything. Whoa. So they would just insert him wherever, and they just called him Glue. I, I love that so much. That's incredible. Yeah, like he, like he. I was on this uh, debate, like comedy debate show, like on Screen Junkies, and I argued. And I'm a fan of so many people on SNL, but they said, "Who is the best cast member of all time?" Oh, dude. And I said, "Phil Hart." Hands down. Because I said down. the definition of a cast member is Phil Hartman. His nickname was Glue. He's he literally in everything. Everything. Yeah. 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 Even Chris Farley, who like pound for pound might be funnier. Like he might, when he's funny, he might be funnier than right. Phil Hartman is what I'm saying. I like the now in this one book. Uh, I think it's live from New York. Uh, they talk a lot about SNL, and it's an it's a book about SNL, and they talk about the different people, their roles that they played on the show. And they considered Chris Farley, if like they use the analogy of football, they use they would use on the show Chris Farley and Adam Sandler and those guys like the special teams. You'd only use them for field yeah. goals and stuff like that because what they did was so specific and it got such a pop. Yeah. That you can't carry an entire show around that kind of energy. Right. And then like, you know And Phil Hartman say he's like a lineman or something right. like that. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Sure. Yeah. Football stuff. Football stuff, you know. <laughs> Dave and I watch a lot of football. Sports. <laughs> yeah. We, uh, do you want to talk about longboards again? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Is that... I might know more about longboards than I do about football. That's uh, weird. I, I, that's probably uh, <laughs> where I'm at, too. I love America. Uh, now I'm just going to do the rest of the show looking straight into the camera. Do it. Sometimes okay. I do that. Sometimes I make intense eye contact into the lens. At, I didn't know you were married, by the way, Jeremiah. Oh, you didn't? Yeah. Well, mm. I haven't... I was serious. I'm not looking away. 
Okay. Uh, we did used to see each other all the time, but I don't see you anymore. I know. Which I'm so, trying. Which congratulations I'm, on getting married. Thank you, man. Do you have kids? No, I do not. Hell yeah. That'd be weird if uh, I was like, yeah, come on out. <laughs> <laughs> toddler crosses in front of the frame right now. Uh, like, has dude, the that, same hair as you. <laughs> yeah. Then you're like, dude, that toddler's 15, dude. <laughs> 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 Jeremiah, With the same hair, a dumb the... <laughs> a comedian comes in and goes like, whoa, your kid looks like my college roommate, dude. <laughs> <laughs> now that's a quality callback yeah. from Dave Ross. <laughs> you guys like stand up? Yeah. At K underscore man underscore 999. If spaghetti were a family... What relative would SpaghettiOs be? <laughs> <laughs> this, what is this person's handle again? At K underscore man underscore 999. Well, K man 999, you're pretty cool. Uh, I love this question. <laughs> yeah. If Spaghetti was a family, mm -hmm. what relative would SpaghettiOs be? So that would mean that like every type of Spaghetti was a family member. Yeah, so I think... Um, like you know, the Mastacholi would be <laughs> the dad. <laughs> the dad, maybe. The mom is angel hair. Of course, angel, angel hair. Angel hair, of yeah. course. Uh, maybe the son is like Riccatoni. Would that be considered spaghetti, though? Uh, it starts getting into the pasta territory. <laughs> <It> might... <laughs> yeah. Be... Yeah, I think SpaghettiOs um, is the twin that died in the womb. <laughs> I'm a terrible person. I can't, I can't. You know what? This is really weird. Uh, SpaghettiOs is actually calling in right now. Oh, no. Hello. <laughs> oh, my God. How are you calling? I'm from the womb. <laughs> You're calling from the womb? I'm calling from the womb of my mother, Angel. <laughs> There's a phone in Angel Air's womb yes the reception is not great no definitely and actually i'm also calling from the grave as well <laughs> so you know the connection gets very muddy around here so you died and her womb died yes. and went with you okay yes my also are you on speaker I am. I put it for the other spaghettios to hear. We are a collective oh what like the borg Yes, all the spaghettios are in one place. You see, that was my brothers <laughs> and sisters that also did not make it out of the womb. I didn't realize that so much of your family um, didn't make it, and I'm sorry. It's okay, at least my twin brother made it out of the womb. What was his name? Fetachi. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, he really made it. And you know what? I don't know if you can see this from beyond the grave, but Fettuccini is, he's famous, man. Really? Oh, yeah. Big how, time. How famous are we talking? I mean, everybody knows Fettuccini. And, you know, I don't know if you know this, though. Um... He's a little bit of a white sauce guy now. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he went full up. I know. He's full Alfredo now. Oh, full Alfredo. <sighs> yeah. Well, we used to have an expression here in the womb. When you're here, you're family. That is not your expression. I know it's a w original spaghetti womb <laughs> quote from our family, transcended down from generations of generations. Um. Okay. Well, no, it's not. But sure, you're allowed. I'll let you. you I believe you. Sustained in the court of spaghetti. What? In the court of spaghetti. Yes, oh. in the court of spaghetti. It looks like you are Judge Jerry and Executioner Dave Ross. Can I say something to you, SpaghettiOs? For someone who died before even uh, being a baby, you know a lot about the American judicial system. But well, I've also haunted a lot of people's cabinets. <laughs> oh, that's true. That's true. You Pun are? Unintended. <laughs> Spaghettios, I man, honestly, this is an honor. I think you might be the most famous person I've ever talked to on the phone. Well, it is an honor to talk to you, Dave Ross. I'm a big fan of your sketch group, Women Comedy. Oh, thank you. Yeah, 
I don't like you. All right, uh, you know, I tried to butter your biscuits, but you say no like you. You say no like me. You say spaghetti nose. <laughs> I do say spaghetti nose. Um, right, well, but, I mean, you know, you seem nice. I don't know. You just taste bad. All I'm right, sorry. Well, I apologize. I'm being sucked back into the ethereal place. Okay, don't apologize. I'm, I'm glad Goodbye. that you're gone. Okay, see ya. Bye. I can't believe that SpaghettiOs That's weird, just man. called in. That's... I mean... <laughs> I mean... <laughs> how do they how, even operate How did they phone? get this number? How'd they get the number? How'd they push... How'd they dial 911? <laughs> Which is your that, number? That's my operating <laughs> number for Jeremiah. Wonders. It's just nine eleven. It's like you mean nine one one? No, 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 no. It's clearly it's 9/11. phonetically. You know, like whenever you call the one yeah one eight hundred n i n e e l e v e n, and you got to hit all the numbers, otherwise it doesn't. I know it's more than seven, but Jeremiah has a longer number. It's true. Let's get into this final segment of the Hell show. Yeah, dude. Sax talk. Nice. Oh. Uh, hell yeah, dude. All right, Dave. I uh, I prepped you before the show and told you you're going to share a story of a sexual encounter, and I'm going to play some sweet, sweet saxophone underneath while you do it. All right. And I will follow you whenever you're ready. All right. Let's see. Here's the thing. The first sexual encounter that comes to mind, I've told this story a bunch. Um... On, well, you can any. It can be little. It can be big. If you don't want to share that one, it can be something else. If you shared it a bunch, they could be something else. Sure. Yeah. No. No. I just realized. It, I just need a second. I think. Okay. Cool. But, which is great for your podcast. Yeah. For yeah. me to not have prepared. Oh no, that's all. You're good. welcome. <laughs> <laughs> I will say while while you're thinking about this, um, I will say that uh, one of the things that uh. You know, whenever we're coming up in the in the scene together that I have always like respected you guys for is your sketch group women, Mm -hmm. Um, because whenever you guys were putting out those sketches, I feel like it's in as far as L.A. comedy goes, there wasn't much great sketch going on. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. You guys really like everything looked good. It sounded good. Thanks, man. And uh I really enjoyed those sketches. I followed them for, uh, you know, a long time while, while you guys were doing them. And uh, I'm glad that, uh, that uh, you know, Jake and Matt are doing like, oh, their dude. thing with corporate Corporate's and stuff incredible, now. Like, man. it's so cool. Yeah. Like, it's cool to see, like, like, different things branching out from that sketch group and stuff like that. It's really cool. Yeah, man. That sketch group was really important for all of us. And I still, like, I'm so proud of it. And I love them. We're all still friends. We yeah. all hang out. We'll do more shit together. I was in corporate. Um, how how was that being on? Uh, you know your your buddies. You know they, oh, they create the, a show together, and then you dream. come and do a spot on it. It's, it's like that's it's, that's what we're working for. It's you know, the like, dream. It's pretty cool. Yeah, I was also opposite Lance Reddick almost the entire time. Who's you know Lieutenant Daniels from The Wire? <laughs> so that was like. Him even being in their show and then meeting him and it was because of them. Ugh, the best ever. Um, all right. Let's see. Oh, okay. Um, I have one. This is perfect. Um, I'll just go for it. All right. Well, this doesn't happen so much anymore now, but... I, uh, well, I have a lot of anxiety and I especially had a lot of anxiety around sex when I was younger. So sometimes I would lose my erection. (laughs) And, uh, yeah, I don't really care looking back, but it would like made me wonder a lot like, uh, am I just not a man, you know? One time I hooked up with a girl. She was so beautiful and so cool. I was like, oh, so excited. She lived in my neighborhood and she was that girl. I was always like, oh, she's so good. You know, and uh, we talked one night. We went home together and um, we're, you know, like we're making out. We're taking each other's clothes off. 
And then I got real nervous. I <laughs> uh, lost my boner. Um, she got really frustrated. I was like, ah, and we like made out more, hooked up more, got a boner again, went in for it, lost the boner again, and then she looked me dead in my face and yelled at me, why won't you just fuck me? <laughs> uh, and then I looked right at her and said, well, that didn't help. And it was probably the most honest I've ever been in my entire life. And uh, I left, and I never saw her again. Don't worry, though, dude. Nowadays, I fucking crush piss. <laughs> Hell yeah, dude. Every day. On my board. Also, I'm rich. Dude, you're rich... <laughs> and you go to longboard? Yeah, dude. This guy's a freaking catch, dude. <laughs> I know. I got the longboard first. You know what they say? First you get the longboard, then you get the money, <laughs> then you stop losing your boner. Dude, that's the American dream right there. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I like telling stories about losing erections because I think it happens to so many people and we're so terrified. I just want to... I saw. I forget who it was. I saw someone, someone do a set one time recently. They were like... All right, dudes in the crowd, who lo- how many of you lose your boner? And one guy literally yelled, never. And I was like, oh, buddy, oh, for you it's always. All the time, <laughs> of course. Anybody yeah. who's like, never, why are you asking about it? Yeah. It's always for <laughs> My dick is a truck. Uh, <laughs> Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. <laughs> yeah. Penis, penis, penis. Uh, Pat Reagan and I were coming out with um, uh, our debut uh, music comedy album soon and oh. we have a uh, we have a song on there called I Just Went Soft nice yeah which uh, whenever we do it live it does really well like in front of the guys but it does sometimes even better in front of the females that are in there because it's just so like it's calling out like a thing yeah, that happens, happens to them all the time and yeah. the reason it's I think it's just bad especially bad for women because because we're all supposed to have like the world's hardest dick all the time that can like beat Mike Tyson in a fight, you know what I mean? When you like happen to get anxious and lose it, then like a lot of dudes, I think, like flip out and kind of like scare women that they're hooking up with. And like, if you're, I've talked to women who are like, yeah, I just wish if guy lost guys lost their boner, they would just not care. That would be the best thing ever. And so yeah, you guys playing that song, they're like, oh fucking cool. Yeah, yeah. Someone's fine with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um. Yep. Anyway, <laughs> Harvey Weinstein's calling. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this segment is called "Let's Make Dave Sweat More." <laughs> oh, dude, I'm pretty good at that. Dude, we had a. Uh, this is uh, fun, man. Th- it was great, man. Thanks for uh, for doing the show. Do you want to uh, plug uh, your podcast? Anything oh, else yeah. you got going on? Yeah, listen to my podcast, Suicide Buddies. Um, you can find it. You know, all the podcast places. We uh. It's me and Hampton Yunt, if you know Hampton. And, and he is a phenomenal comedian and riffer. That guy. Oh, like, dude. I mean, I, I have watched so many sets of him where uh, he won't do material and he'll just riff. And oh, my it's God. so fun to watch. He's a genius, man. Yeah. When he did uh, New Faces at Just for Laughs, apparently the first thing he said on stage, it's in Montreal. It's this huge festival where, like, your show is in front of a thousand people that are the entire entertainment industry. <laughs> goes up on stage in Canada and says, do you guys have 9-11 up here? (laughs) (laughs) And it murdered, apparently. So anyway, yeah, listen to that, if only for how funny Hampton is. That's great. Yeah. Awesome, dude. Well, uh, man, I'm freaking... Yeah, I'm happy I'm here, dude. I'm glad that we had a chance to to catch up. Yeah, me too. It's been a minute. Yeah. Yeah, let's see each other more, man. This was fun. Yeah, I'm like, uh, you know, like I've told you in the past, uh, I continue to, whenever I'm not on the road, try to make my way east of uh the comedy scene a little bit more and i want to get you over here uh yeah i'm trying to make it out to the store more yeah Yeah. i mean yeah you just everybody loves you there and yeah i know i don't just don't go there enough man totally every every time i'm there i'm like this is everyone i mic'd with 
It Why really is. Come here, well, and, and that's how I feel whenever I go east for shows. Uh, I'm like, it's just like so many of the crew that I haven't seen in a minute that I yeah. used to see every mic that I went to. Totally. So, heck yeah, bro. Cool. Well, I'll see you more then. All right. Sounds good. Yeah, thanks. Jeremiah, 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 J